We're live. All right, we are live. Hi, everyone. I hope the music is good. Give me some Wednesday vibes. All right. Let's uh, let's mute this. All right. I think we're good. I think we're good. Let me know in the comments. For good. Can you see me? Can you hear me? I think so. All right. Cool, cool, cool. Hi, everyone. Um, I hope you're having a good Wednesday thus far. Good morning, afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Thanks for joining. Um, you know, I did this back in June, um, and uh, it was super well received. Um, you know, those diagrams that uh, that I'm creating, that I'm seeing, that you're seeing all over the place. Um, if you're, you know, in the Azure space and more specifically in the Azure Arc uh, space and Azure Hybrid, uh, you know, those diagrams. Uh, it's been a process to develop those and just kind of get my get my groove going um, in the past few years and just kind of standardize on my style. Um, today, I wanted to do something kind of similar but a bit different. Um, you know, in the previous one, I talked a lot about uh, the concepts and all of that, which we're going to do uh, today. Um, but today, I also wanted to do this a bit differently. I wanted to take a couple of good diagrams. We'll talk about this. Take a couple of diagrams and for us to basically abuse those diagrams. Um, and again, apologies up front if, if by any chance you joined this stream and you created those diagrams, that will be, a, you know, very, a very much a coincidence. But um, so no harm, no foul, I hope. Uh, so let's uh let's just get going you know i'll share uh i'll share with you what i have here and uh we'll go from there cool so i wanted to get started we're just kind of level set and and explain why why we are here but I, I hope the music is not you know is in good uh you know is in is in good volume you know and you're getting the vibes um i don't know why it's called feeding the ducks like this track i have no idea but here we are anyway so why so why we are here you know throughout the years as uh as an architect and as a person that has been in this industry for for 20 years now uh, you know i always been involved in some level of architecture related roles whether as an architect or a sysadmin back in the days i started you know with uh, I actually my background is coming from uh Linux and Solaris and you know Unix and stuff like that. Um, and as I kind of mature with my career, I move over to the VMware stuff. Uh, thanks everyone for uh, you know for uh, for commenting in the chat. Hey, you know let let me know in the chat if if there's something that you want me to cover. There's a lot of things that we're gonna cover today. I'll try to keep it under an hour, uh, but let me know in the comments. Thanks everyone for joining. So as I was saying, I was. I was starting my career and kind of moving to the VMware stuff and then joined Microsoft. And, you know, every time that on, in every role that I was part of, I was always around diagrams. I was always around architecture, designing things. And it took me a while to find my find my groove when it comes to those diagrams. And again, everything that you're going to see today is just my interpretation on how I like to see architecture diagrams, whether those diagrams are high level or very much low level diagrams. Uh, we'll talk about that. So why we are here we're here because we want to uh today we want to understand how to create or at least understand the concepts behind uh those diagrams that that you're seeing me publishing um all over the place those diagrams that you can see in the azure docs today or you know in presentation if you see me doing some of those presentations um regarding azure arc i do want to say that today is not about azure arc that's not that's not what this session is all about it's really about just kind of uh, giving you some knowledge and some of the tips and tricks and, the, and that that I collected throughout the years when it comes to those diagrams. So, um, and hopefully, you know, we'll be able to do this every few months, just kind of, you know, iterations on, on on what you're seeing. And this one is one of the latest diagrams that I created uh, for uh, for AKS slide. So again, we'll talk about a lot of the concepts that that we're seeing here. So. With that, let's just you know, let's just uh, um, let's just start with uh, with the concept. Um, I see uh, again. Apologies. I hope I'm not butchering your name. Is that Siddharth? Um, uh, can you shed more light on AKS architecture with Azure Arc? Well, I can if we'll have time. But again, like I mentioned, this is not 
it's not really about the technology. Um, it's really about uh, the the diagrams and the concepts around that. So again, uh, feel free to reach out to me after you know on LinkedIn, um, and I can definitely uh, I can definitely uh, provide you with some more knowledge. Anyway, so. I wanted to cover a few topics before I'm diving into the actual practical stuff. Uh, real quick, let's you know, let's just dive into it. So every time I should tell a story. I, I mentioned this in the previous in the previous stream that I did uh, back in June um, on on the architecture diagrams, and and I started with this notion of every time I should tell a story. Now. When you're telling that story, you also need to remember who is it that you're talking to, like who you're telling that story to, um, who is the audience that you are, uh, that is in the room, um, what should be, you know, what should be the flow, the direction of the diagram depends on what you're doing. Is it the diagram that goes from, you know, east to west or, you know, left, right or uh, north, south, up, down? Uh, really, it, it depends. It depends on what you're trying to, what you're trying to do. Also, and I've seen this many, many times, like people tend to over-engineer diagrams and they shouldn't. Uh, you know, a lot of the times those diagrams, and again, if you're creating very deep dive architecture diagrams, you know, with protocols and all, the, and all that, sure, that's okay. That's the goal of your diagram. But even there, you really need to remember when to stop. Like, you know, more, you know, or less is more uh, a lot of the time. So don't over-engineer diagrams. Again, we'll talk about it a bit more in this uh, in this uh, in this uh, stream um, and what type of diagrams I'm creating which lead me to uh, to the next topic um, what you know what is it that you're actually creating so basically in an architecture world there are uh, there are three types of overarching diagrams okay there is conceptual diagrams there is logical diagrams and there are physical diagrams now let's let's go over those those diagrams for a second and in order for us to understand that we need to understand the basic concepts like what is conceptual so if you're talking about something that is conceptual if you're doing an architecture that is a conceptual architecture what is it that you're actually talking about so conceptual is something that is very high level right so sport sports right sports is a conceptual thing right you have something called sports and you know that there are things inside sports that you can talk about that like it expands to numerous amount of topics so with that you're going one level deep and uh, this is the logical level so logical level will be in this case basketball right so that's what we're seeing here but a physical one will be very specific so here we see Michael Jordan and that's the physical diagram so you can see the journey between those between those layers right conceptual logical physical and every diagram will have its own characteristic its own uh, um, basically concepts that you are referring to and always remember if you're creating something that is conceptual usually you're going to have less elements in a conceptual design generally speaking uh it's not a rule of thumb logical will usually will have a bit more objects to it and a bit more text explanations um and physical will go very deep physical will be about you know protocol explaining flow um and a lot of those a lot of those things again we'll talk about all of that uh today all right, cool. So with that, um, here's the first thing that we need to remember when we're creating a, when we're creating a diagram. Um, and I don't know if that's my OCD talking or or if it's something else. But uh, to me, to me, when I go, you know, when I go to a restaurant and if I see something that doesn't look good, um, you know, I will have second thoughts if, if that's actually something that I want to eat. And and the same goes for diagrams. Uh, would you eat that? Like if you're looking at the diagram, and it's like, okay, I, I don't understand what's going on. This is complete rubbish. I, you know, there's no, there's no way I understand what, what, what is the story here. And I see this a lot of the times and it's not about, it's not just about the concepts. A lot of the time you will understand what the storyteller is trying to tell you, but it will not look good. It will look messy. It will not be detail oriented. Um, and to me, and again, this is just my perspective. When you are working on a product, when you are, uh, trying to build something for other people. If you want to increase the adoption of that product, at the end of the day, um, this is, you know, those diagrams, those decks that you're creating, um, those are basically your business card. This is how things look like um, as you are opening those doors for the for those conversations. Everything starts with the eyes, right? Uh, we're seeing those diagrams and that's what we want to, that's what we want to tackle today. Okay. So enough with the, uh, you know, with the overview and just kind of let's let's move let's move into the practical.
that's the first rule of thumb that you need to remember. Don't be lazy. Details matter. You can just create a diagram and be like, yeah, yeah, here's an architecture diagram. Look, when you're creating an architecture diagram, you really need to think about how does it look end to end? Like what, what is it that I'm seeing here? So the details are the things that are assembling those diagrams to the point that it's pleasing to the eye and will get you engaged with whoever it is that you are talking to. If a diagram looks like like crap, you know, you will you will you will understand that it looks like crap. Like you're going to get that feedback. Now, the problem with social media is that, you know, the feedback that you're getting is very a lot of the time is very flat. Like you're posting something on social media and, you know, you're going to get the likes, you're going to get the, you know, the thumbs up. Fine. But at the end, no one is getting into a deep dive discussion or most of the time, no one is getting into a deep dive discussion when it comes to those diagrams. So uh, the details matter. All right, let's start. So I picked a couple of diagrams. Um, this is the first one that, uh, that I found on LinkedIn. And again, apologies if you created that diagram. Um, but uh, this diagram has multiple problems. Um, and I wanted to take those problems and break those down. So then we can start creating something of our own and see how things look like. So let's, uh, you know, let's do this. Okay, so first thing. Connecting errors to the object and in a centralized fashion. So let's talk about that. Okay. So what I'm going to do here, let's uh, go out of the presentation mode and you can already see just kind of the points that I want to make, but let's talk about the first one. So connecting errors um, and objects and in a centralized fashion. So let me show you what I'm referring to. Um, so this is number one. You can see here, right? And let me try to, you know, I'll try to uh, use... Uh, you zoom it the way that it was intended to be used. I guess not. Anyway, you can see that arrow here and apologies for this being like super big, um, you know, those lines. Do you see this arrow right here? Do you see this one right here? You see how those are not really connected to the center of the tube. And we'll talk about those tubes, those pipes um, in a moment here. But also that's not the only problem that I'm seeing with those arrows. I'm also seeing that, you know, this line right here is all the way to the bottom of the pipe. This line right here is actually connected and in the center. So that's kind of weird. So that's problem number one. Problem number two that we're seeing is crossing objects with uh, with the arrowhead. So let's uh, let's zoom in here and understand what I'm talking about. So this area right here is the problematic area. When you're creating a diagram and you're shooting arrows, right, which is going to be most of the times, right, when you especially with architecture diagrams, as you are, you know, talking about flow and all that, there's no better way to do that with arrows, right? But when you're creating a diagram and you wanna and you want the uh, the viewer to understand the flow of the diagram, be specific about where those from where to where those arrows are going to. Okay, so let's uh, let's explain. So you see that arrow right here, and also this arrow right here that we have. You see that box, right? That's the border of the box. There's no reason why the error will touch the box, will cross the box. And the idea here was to actually, um, you know, connect the arrow to the pipe, right? If I understand correctly, the diagram, like, because I didn't create that one. But the idea here was create or, or do the same like we have here, just kind of shoot, have a shooting arrow from the, the pipe, right? All the way to the process. Now, here you can see that it's not really the case, right? I mean, you can see that this is actually touching both the box and the pipe. So that's kind of weird. Problem number two. Problem number three is space out the inner boxes. So let's do this. All right. So we're talking about number three here. So we're talking about this and we're talking about this. Now, what is the problem here? The problem here is basically the uh the fact that you have two boxes right and you have one box that is inside basically inside the big box so that's box number one that's box number two and then you have the tube right but the problem here is that you don't have any border or any separation so i should say, separation i should say between uh this box and that box like you can see that it's in the same place so we'll talk about that we'll see what is a better way to visualize basically hierarchy or inner box relationship um, inside uh, inside the diagram. 
In addition to that, you can see that um, you can see that the tube here, right, or tube pipe doesn't really matter, right? But you can see that you have like this small gap. You see that small gap that you have here between a uh, small space that you have between the tube and the box. But here, that space is bigger, which brings me to point number four, which is all about symmetry, uh, symmetry and positioning. So symmetry and positioning, there are a few things here that you wanna that you wanna think about. So um, let's talk about symmetry here. Few problems. One, you can see that you have like this Java process, you have this Java process, right? You have this Java process and this one. But here, those two monitors, right? I should say, those two are aligned, like they're in the same line, kinda. They're in the same line, but here. This one has, you can see that it's not falling under the same line. You can see that there is a gap. Like, you see that? Goes all the way from here to here. So that's not, so this is not symmetry. And also, you can see that the arrow that you have here, right, is longer than the arrows that you have here. The actual arrows are not even equal. And also the envelope, which is supposed to describe the message, that's also not here. So, sorry, that's also not in a symmetry fashion because it's, positioned here in that side but here it goes all the way and it's a bit to the right and because the arrow is not equally in size there is there is a drift so that's a bit of a problem so those are four points that we're gonna that we're gonna see how to how to correct um let's talk about another example here um that i wanted to uh that i wanted to show you you know let's try to let's try to uh to zoom in here uh, instead of me just kind of doing all this back and forth so uh, text is important. Why would you cross it? You can see that you have a text here, but you have an arrow that is actually, you know, killing the text, which is which is weird. I mean, why would you do that? Like, if you're trying to say something and you have an arrow and it's literally blocking the R, right? You can see that. So you also need to think about it not from a, just a, um, uh, you know, a design or a visual uh, or visualization. You also need to think about it from an accessibility standpoint. I mean, when you're creating those diagrams and all of a sudden you have a text that is blocked or is crossed by by an arrow, that's just look weird. Also here you have Azure search and look at this. I mean, you see that search, right? And the arrow is just kind of touching that. It just doesn't look very, uh, uh, you know, elegant. It's just, it's not clean. So that's point number two. Sorry, that's point number one. Bidirectional arrows versus two arrows. So this is something that um, uh, that is important to cover because you need to decide when you want to use a bidirectional arrow like you have here. So that's a bidirectional arrow, but when to use two arrows and how to use them correctly. So if you have here, you see that Azure search, um, you know, object or icon that you have here, and you also have this search right here. You can see that you have two arrows. Like if you look closely, you can see that you have two arrows. Let's uh, let's uh, let's zoom in. Uh, let's zoom in here. So you can see that you have arrow number one and you have arrow number two. But those arrows are just, you know, attached to one another, and and you just can't see the separation. So it's important. It's important rule of thumb, right? When you're creating those diagrams, like when you want to use bidirectional, when you want to use. Um, uh, two errors. Usually it's related to the text that you are attaching to the arrow, like, um, which brings me to point to the next point. Um, and, uh, well, outdated icons, we'll talk about that, but icon relationship and flow clarity. So first of all, let's talk about the, the outdated icons. So again, I mentioned details matter. If you're creating a diagram, and especially if you are, you know, in the customer space and you're creating diagrams for customers and all that, some of those customers will actually, you know, actually know what those icons are representing. But also it's good practice for you as you're creating the diagrams, making sure that you're on top of things, making sure that you're out, that you're up to date with the latest and greatest. I'll talk more, at, you know, at the end of this, at the end of this uh, stream, I'll talk more about the uh, uh, you know some resources that you can use and where to find icons and all of that and some of the inspiration that i have um or i had throughout the years um with diagrams but coming back to this diagram right here so we can see that um you know number three so that's the outdated icon right so that's not an azure icon and i think that that was meant to be an azure subscription i'm not sure which is also not the icon so not sure that's the thing like that's the clarity that you need to drive with those diagrams 
um, in icon relationship and flow clarity. So I talked about that. So you can see all these number fours, four, 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 like you can see all those, all of these. Now, if, if you have those shooting arrows all over the place, you can't expect someone to understand the flow uh, just because you took an error from left to right or up down um, or vice versa. You can't just expect that. You need to put some text or some context that will explain the flow, that will make the viewer understand what is it that, they, that you're trying to say here. Okay, so those are additional four concepts that I wanted to, uh, that I wanted to uh, talk to you about. All right. With that, let's uh, let's start with the let's start with the practical stuff, right? Let's uh, let's 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 draw some stuff. All right. So I'm gonna take us uh, out from uh, um, from uh, presentation mode, and I'm gonna start drawing things. So let's try to fix that diagram here. And uh, you know, again, I have my cheat sheet here open on the side, so just so I won't forget to talk to you about all those all those things that uh, that I want to talk about. Um, so let's uh, let's start. The first concept that you that you want to remember, uh, the first kind of design principle, um, and I mentioned this again in the previous one, is that uh, you need to start from within, from the smallest parts, and then work your way out. Before we're going to do that, let's talk about the basic. Let's talk about this glowing box that I'm using all over the place. Obviously, you can take the shortcut and basically use that, that deck that I'm going to share after or in the resources that I'm going to share with you after as well and just copy the, uh, the format. I'll show you how to do that as well. But let's create that box from scratch for a second uh, so everyone will be kind of on the same page and understand how I, you know, how I do things. So, how I do things. so uh, you go to shapes uh, and we'll just kind of create a very simple ugly blue box um that's uh that's my uh acronym simple ugly blue box so s-u-b-b uh, for uh for this one and let's try to create uh or transform that box into this glowing shape that you're seeing to do that um, i'm gonna click the box and i'll go to shape format and sorry i'm gonna go to design and then format background and then i'm gonna pick the diagram and here what we can see is we have the format shape pane uh this is where we're gonna start manipulating uh manipulating the diagram okay so here are a few things that you wanna uh that you wanna do so you have the uh basically you have the solid fill right so that's something that you're gonna get um by default so we're talking about this right here solid fill but you also want to create a black box so it will merge with the black uh, uh, background that you have. So to do that, we're going to go here to color. And first of all, we're going to just change it to black. Super simple. So that's basically uh, one thing that you need to do. The um, line also change it to solid line. So you will have, you know, so you'll be able to see the box. You will be able to see what you're working with. And that's also going to play uh, a role in the final in the final result of that diagram. Okay, so we have that. Let's move on to uh, uh, basically to the effects. The effects is where you're gonna manipulate the box so it will look uh, like, you know, like we talked about this glowing shape um, of a diagram. So first thing first, uh, present, like when keep that on no shadow, that's totally okay. The color, this is where things are gonna start uh, getting their glow effect. So we're gonna change it to blue accent right here. We can see that we already have something starting. Um, again, not the result that we want. Come back here. And now we need to start changing the values that we have here. So I'm gonna go with transparency of 30. And you can play around with that. I mean, these are this is just the concept. You can play around with that and, and just feel your way, see if that's something that, uh, that you can relate to. All right, so transparency, we're gonna keep that to 30. We're gonna keep the size, so size is 100. Uh, we're going to increase the blur effect, so we're going to change it to 45. You can already see that this is basically creating that glow that you want. And in the distance and in the angle, I'm going to change this to zero. And the distance I'm going to change to zero, just going to make it a bit more uh, elegant. And there we go. So we have the glow. Uh, so we have the diagram and all there is left uh, to do is basically um, go here and change the color of the line which i forgot to do um and there you go 
here's the glow here's the glowing box and this is going to be the pivot this is going to be what we're going to start creating the diagram form all right cool so we uh we see how to do that important piece as you're creating the diagrams always know the center um again this is something that i usually do at the end of creating the diagram just kind of centralizing the entire th thing right so grouping things together um i'll talk about that um and all right let's just uh let's just get going so we have kafka coster we have kafka broker we have the topic awesome like i mentioned let's start with the let's start with the smallest part okay which is basically that uh that kafka topic to me that's the that's the smallest so one word about uh tubes and all that usually i don't like using those tubes those uh those shapes um you know that looks like this um so i'll go here to shapes and just gonna select this or just gonna do that um you know if you want to see the lines so just uh you know gonna give it an accent so usually i don't like to use those because as you are stretching them uh there is a bit of asymmetry when it comes to the uh you know to the entrance of the of the pipe and you know just kind of the, sh the, the shape looks a bit off like so only if you're staying within like that size it will look like a tube um i don't really like it because it doesn't give you a lot of room to uh to work with but for the sake of this dragon i'm just gonna i'm just gonna keep keep us with that so the easy way to just kind of transform that into um into the shape is basically select the diagram and then i'm gonna go here to uh format painter and just gonna click that and there we go we have we have that i don't like the the blue line inside it because it feels too much um here is just the border but here because of the fact that you also have like you can see here you have this you have this uh you know inner line i don't like it because that's that's just too much so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna change it here to white just gonna give it a bit more of an accent maybe um i'm also gonna uh change the width here um yeah i think i think that that looks okay i'm gonna color this in different color uh later i'm gonna talk about color grading here so i'm gonna move this and let's uh let's start so this one is kafka topic you can see that when i'm writing it goes um vertical so that's not what we want in order to fix that basically what i can do is i can go different routes but you know what let's just put that on the side I'm gonna take another shape and uh do this so let's just test this yeah okay so this one is fine again take the format painter do this and there you go so now um, um i'm gonna i'm gonna start the change so what do we have we have kafka topic um i don't like the font we're gonna talk about that and also um so i don't i don't like this font usually when i'm doing diagrams what i'm using is i'm using pentroid uh so that's my favorite font uh when i'm you know when i'm creating those diagrams you can also uh decide to maybe bold it a bit if if that's your thing i'm not a fan of bolding things inside the diagram i think it's uh, it's too much but i want you to pay attention to something you can see that as i'm manipulating this the text is not is basically not aligned to the center so to fix that uh what we can do is we can just uh one uh just kind of centralize that text but also here you can see that you have so um i'm gonna go here to basically the alignment and we'll select the middle so that will bring the text to the to the center and as i'm manipulating the text will stay in the center okay cool all right we're just gonna maybe make this a bit smaller um yeah i think that looks fine with the color gradient it will look better all right cool so let's move fast here I'm gonna move this to the background. In case that you created something and it's not in the background, what you can do is you can just right click and send to back and that will change to the background. Let us uh, let me show you how it looks like with this. So send to back and that, that moves it to the background. Uh, now I don't need this one, so I'm gonna just uh, delete this. Now we started with the smaller part and now we have Kafka Broker. So uh, Kafka Broker. And again, I'm going to change the text here. Pentroid. That's cool. And usually what I also like to do, if you, uh, you know, it, it's not mandatory, but sometimes it makes sense to choose a bigger font as you go up the stack. It's just going to emphasize relationship. 
Um, so let's let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to change this one to 18, you know, just uh, just for kicks. All right, Kafka Broker. You can also already see, by the way, we talked about the spacing, right? So you can already see that I have the space here, I have the space here, and this is already uh, symmetrical. So that's awesome. All right, Kafka Broker. Control D will basically bring you to uh, uh, will get you the same uh, the same uh, shape um, in the same format. So what I'm going to do, I'm again, I'm going to send this one to the back, and you, let's uh, let's try to find the right balance here. So we'll just expand this one a bit, and you can see that as I am just uh, do this for a second. As I am moving, pay attention to pay attention to uh, to those lines, the the dotted red lines. They will give you basically the positioning. Okay, so always just kind of pay attention to the middle. Okay, all right. That looks like that looks like a good uh, like a good positioning. I'm just gonna stretch this one a bit, and also you always need to remember like what are your next steps? Like what is that that you're trying to do? Remember that there is an arrow going to the Kafka topic. Okay, like you have those two arrows that are going into the Kafka topic. So pay attention to this because. As you are shooting arrows, and you can you can play around with that, like you don't have to have the full diagram yet. But what you can do is you can basically shoot an arrow, right? And I'm gonna maybe make this one a bit bigger. Um, all right, cool. So as you are shooting this arrow, right, you can see that you have a good space here. Like this is a good space because if I were to have like the Kafka, for example, here. We're going to get to the same point that or the same we're going to make the same mistake that we saw in the you know in the previous diagram right in in this one like so we don't want that so what i'm going to do like let's uh, hit a few control z and we're going to remove this arrow for now for now all right cool so now that we have the we have the center we have the pivot of this diagram right this entire block um so that's cool all right moving along Let's uh, let's create uh, those processes that we have, those monitors that you're seeing. Let's uh, let's create those. Let's see how we are on time. All right, pretty good. Um, so, in order for me to do that, I'm gonna just uh, take this from what I have here and I'm just gonna paste it here. So I have I already have this icon. In order for you to find some icons, you have multiple resources that I'm gonna share with you. But also, in a very simple fashion, what you can do is you can go to PowerPoint, you go to icons and just select what you or search what you want right so in this case i think that i search for a monitor um yeah so this is the this is the icon that i found um just insert and you're going to get that icon you can see that the colors are not good so basically by changing this the feel and also uh this i'm getting something uh, i'm getting the the white uh kind of icon so that's you know that's okay all right Anyway, we're going to change. Uh, we're going to stay here. So now we have an icon inside. So remember, I mentioned start with the smallest part. So this is here is another small part, right? Because you want to create a template, quote unquote, of the monitor plus the icon within. So you have two monitors that are the same, like with the Java process, and one that is with Python process. To save some time, I have uh, I have those icons already um, already in place. So I'm just going to bring those. Again, finding icons is, is really straightforward, right? I mean, just go to Google, search for the icon name, add the PNG or transparent, and you're going to start seeing, uh, basically, you're going to start seeing uh, um, those icons. You can dr uh, you can drag and drop them and all that. If you want more details, I covered that in the previous in the previous stream. So go ahead and check this out and just kind of see, uh, see what you get in there. Um, again, let me know in the comments if there is something that is uh, that that you want me to maybe explain uh, more about. Uh, but I'm just gonna keep going. All right. So we have this uh, we have this monitor. Usually, I like to have those icons a bit smaller. I mean, this feels a bit big. Uh, let's see how the how the Java thing looks inside. So let's zoom in. Yeah, you can see here. And again, this is this is the details. This is really the details. So let's zoom in. A lot you can see that the flame right is not touching the white border you can see that the cup is not touching the white border i do think that there is maybe room to maybe just change this just a bit and give it a bit more space you can also see the red lines as i'm doing this right you can see that line that is popping i'm just gonna move this um and now I think it's in the center. So I created this, uh, the first part of the template. The second part of that template, of that icon template is the text. Okay, so the text, what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna copy this, copy that, and it's gonna bring this here. Just gonna minimize that a bit. 
and um, what do we have? We have Java process, right? So Java process, you can do that in capital. I think that's okay. Um, actually, you know what? No, it's not a capital. All right, so we have this. Um, I think that this can be a bit smaller, so I'll go with 16. And the text here now is aligned with the icon. There you go. Now we have, let's not talk about boxes yet. So we have this template and we can see like this right here. This is this is our template. Now let's group everything together. You can see that we have multiple objects here. Uh, basically, Control G will, uh, will group, Control Shift G will ungroup, okay? Keyboard shortcuts, very important. I'll share with you a resource after that with some keyboard shortcuts in PowerPoint. Okay, awesome. So we have that uh, we have that grouped in. That's great. Now we want to basically want to just kind of create uh, create those uh, create those uh, uh, create the structure of those processes. So we also have the Python one. So in order for us to create the Python one, I'm just gonna control D, and I'm gonna move the Java process. And it's easier to not work in a group fashion as you are editing. And I'm gonna bring this here, this Python. Oh, control Z, and I'm gonna select this. Oh, all right. You know what? That didn't turn out very well. So we'll do this, we'll do this, and let's replicate again or duplicate. We'll move the Java, we'll change here to Python so we won't forget. And we're going to bring this here. Let's zoom in. I'm going to bring this. Oh, I'm not sure why this is happening when I'm zooming in, but that's okay. All right. So the Python is in the center. Great. We have that. Cool. Now we need to create two more of these. So we'll do this. And I'm going to bring this here. Okay, cool. So now we have the arrows that we need to take care of. Now, you can see here that as I am changing the location, you can see that line. So now the line is pointing basically from the Java process to the left, to the right. So you can see that it's in the center. Uh, so that's good. Now, I also want to uh, group this so I'll be able to see the distance between the icons. So I know that it's equal. So that's important. Okay. So we have that. That's great. And we also have that. The second one. All right, and this one, that's actually was already in the center, I believe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. So this one is already in the center. We'll do this as we go along. You know what? Actually, here's another tip. What you can do is you can basically, let's move this, and you can basically group those two duplicate group those and then duplicate and move here all right now it's better now all there is all there is left to do is to change this take the python one you know what i'll copy that from here and from here now i have python you can see that the icons are also equal you can see the python in the same line of the Java process, uh, sorry, the Java icon. So that's pretty important as well. Just gonna keep the symmetry, keep it clean. All the arrows are aligned. Super important as you are creating those those diagrams. Okay. So Python process. This one we don't need this anymore. Okay. Cool. We have we have the monitors now. Let's create the arrows and talk about that. So we have uh, like you can see those arrows. Like usually I don't like to use arrows that are going like this i like to keep straight lines because it gives you more room for text it gives you more room to manipulate uh manipulate the text so let me show you how it looks like so um let's take the arrow we're gonna piece, uh, pick the shape and here's the arrow that we want you can see that this arrow that is going you know just kind of breaking that pattern of the arrow and I don't want this in the center because if I will do this in the center, if I will take this uh, this arrow in the center uh, or point it to the center or connect it to the center, what will happen is that uh, let's let, let me show you what will happen. I'll do the same here, but you can see that this looks funny. 
So this looks like, you know, one big arrow. I don't want that. And also there is lack of symmetry. Like you can see that there is like a huge gap in height between this and, the, and this, right? So that's not, that doesn't look good. To solve that problem, usually what I like to do is I like to actually split the arrows. And that's actually also from a functionality standpoint, it's, uh, it's even better because you want to show basically uh, how to, you know, the symmetry between the icons and you will have some room. So let me show you how it looks like. I'm just going to save some time here. Um, come on. So it's going to look like this. Let me bring the entire thing here and talk to you about what I did. So open, let's open a new one here and just going to clear everything. And let me just paste everything, same format. This is how the diagram should look like, again, according, uh, in my opinion. So let's talk about that. Again, I just want to save some time and just kind of show you the concepts here. So you can see that now that the arrows are have a lot of symmetry. So we need to play around with that. Like you can play with those arrows. It's pretty easy. Just kind of go up, down, up, down until you reach to that point that, that is good for you. So you can see that we have a good symmetry like this. And how do you know that? This is at the same height as this one. This one at the same uh, width of this one. And those two are connecting kind of in an equal fashion to the Kafka tube. Okay. Also pay attention that I changed the color of the Kafka tube to just kind of emphasize that because it's an important piece inside the diagram. So to do that, basically what I did is um, I went here to the shape and just change that. Now you can pick whatever color that you want. I really like those gray uh, shades um, inside those dark, uh, dark blue glowing diagrams because it has a good contrast. So just keep that in mind. Now, let's talk about the messages. You can see that uh, I changed a bit the uh, the messages uh, layout. So I'll bring this here and I'm just going to move the entire thing. So here we have two icons. We have messages here, messages here, but no one understands that it's actually messages. Um, you know, uh, for someone that, that does not understand Kafka in that specific case, and again, it's not a discussion about Kafka, but you, I know that these are messages, right? And by the way, I haven't even read through the article. I just know that these are messages because in Kafka, you have topics, you have messages. Awesome. But that also looks like an email and that doesn't make a lot of sense. So what I wanted is I wanted to just kind of put a bit more emphasis on this. Also uh, pay attention that I added the Kafka icon here. And this is a good touch. Like this is something that you want to do. Just give a personal touch to the box that you're creating. Give it an icon. Do something that will personalize this, this box. Um, icon is always the best way to do that. So we have messages, a bit more of a modern look icon, uh, the color accent. And also because it's an inner explanation, basically I have this dotted line. So I'm not using like, I'm just, I'm not putting, I don't want to put like, because I changed the, the arrows, right? Um, basically, I don't want to do this. Like, I don't want to put icon here and then put another icon here that will just create like four icons it doesn't make a lot of sense so in order to keep it a bit more clean a bit more minimal elegant I just created one icon and then shoot two arrows from the icon to the to the flow so pay attention to those details also um uh yeah I think that's it that's really the just kind of the process of of creating creating this and again I'm going to share these decks and everything in the description after the stream you'll be able to take this and just kind of uh, play around with that and manipulate that. You can use that as a template. Okay, cool. So that was the first diagram. Um, I wanted to uh, I wanted to talk to you for a second about um, uh, boxes. Let's uh, let's talk text in boxes. So I'm coming back here for a second. Like I mentioned, these elements of text inside or that crossing arrows or uh, you know bidirectional, all those stuff. And and again, you wanna you wanna keep things a bit more on the clean side of the house as you're creating those diagrams, so it will be pleasing to the eye. So I wanna talk to you about about boxes and text inside boxes and all of that. Um, so this is the example diagram that I wanna that I wanna talk about. By the way, one last thing before I'm moving on to this one. Again, coming back to this text that is that is in the shooting arrows. This is how you fix those situations, right? When you have like when you have those. Uh, uh, basically an opportunity to put text, but not use the arrow to use the text or to put the text, 
that's something that is that is a good practice because again it gives you that minimal look you can also see another example here in uh, you know in the diagrams you can see that here this is a this is an architecture diagram and you have a lot of it's a busy diagram but it's a good one because it has a lot of element it's very physical diagram you know what we call level 400 diagram but you can see that the text here is always with a relationship to the line it's never you know it's never like this like this is this is ridiculous right you don't want that so always pay attention to those things all right, coming back to boxes. So talking text inside boxes. As you are creating boxes and you're manipulating the text inside the boxes, always remember that sometimes the default position of the text is not what you want. I'll give you an example to what I'm referring to. So let's uh, let's take this one. You can see that I have, like, let's look at the Linux VM here and we have Windows VM optional, right? That's the text. You can see that there is good relationship, like good synergy between the positioning of this text and this box that you have here, like that Kubernetes K3S box, okay? Why is that? Now, if I were to create this in the default fashion, what would happen is that, uh, let me show you. So I would be like, okay, so Linux VM um, and it will be like that. So a lot of the time people will make the mistake and will be, okay, so I have a text and, but now I wanna, I wanna bring something on, you know, on top of that. So I'm gonna start just kinda making that bigger and bigger and bigger, and that's not good. And then they're gonna position the box in a, you know, not in an optimal place, like something like that. I've seen this a lot. So that's not a good way to handle this. There is actually a very simple solution, right? Which is just drop down the text a bit with, uh, you know, with shift enter and that text will be just kind of dropping and then you will have some room to play with. You can see that, you know, it's not centralized. Remember, we talked about the centralization before and you can see that here it's on the top. It's not centralized. So if that would be centralized, you know, things would have been uh, looked differently. So I don't want that. So that's one thing that you want to remember as you are creating those diagrams. Always keep the always keep the synergy. Always keep the spaces uh, just kind of pleasing to the eye. Um, and again, always use like modern icons, not necessarily modern, but clean icons that are very easy to to understand. Another example to text in a box or an element or, or you know design principle that I want to show you is this one. Let's uh, let's take this for as an example. So I'll copy all of that here. And here, what I did is I wanted to create a box that will be in this size because I didn't want the box to be, you know, too big and all that. So what I did, um, basically, I separated the text from the box. So this box doesn't have a text element. If, if that would have had the text element, what will happen? It would have looked like this. So let's, uh, let's look at the differences between the two. So I'll put those side by side. You can see that the flux here, looking at the chat, uh, so... The flux here is really at the top of the box. And this here, you have like this unnecessary gap that just doesn't contribute anything to, to that box. So that's why I decided to basically take a separate element of the, of the flux text and put it on top of the box. And then what you can do, uh, you know, in order to replicate this um, across the board, just pick all of that, Control Shift G. You can see that I have multiple groups here. Control Shift G, that will separate this. And here, Control G, that will give you that entire box. And what you can do is just Control D and replicate that. So those are elements that are inside the box. All right, cool. As we're getting closer to the end of the stream, again, I hope that you're learning some concepts and things that I'm looking at. Uh, again, always available to answer questions if you have any um, following, following this stream. Um, so uh, hit me up. Now, let's talk about another concept, which is why I don't uh, like using triangles. Someone asked me that, uh, you know, I noticed that your diagram doesn't have the doesn't have the triangles. Uh, yeah, I don't like triangles in, in those diagrams because triangles have a very fundamental problem when it comes to those architecture diagrams. I'm not saying that triangles are not good fit for certain diagrams. They're usually a good fit if you have only minimal, like for conceptual diagrams, they're pretty, they're pretty decent. I mean, you can do some stuff with diagrams, but for the diagrams that I'm creating, the ones that are a bit deeper in details, uh, triangles are not good. And let me explain to you why. So I have this box right here um, um, and I put some text here. I hope uh, I will have space for this. And you can see that that text doesn't have any problem, right? But let me show you what will happen um, if I'll try to do that in, in, a, you know, in a triangle. So 
I have less real estate basically in a triangle. And now that text is uh, already spreading across three lines. That's not a good use of space. That's not optimal. That's not ideal. And if you want this to be, you know, look better, you're going to have to have a huge triangle. That's not, you know, that's not what you want. Also from a centralization standpoint, right? So here I have it in the center and I already have it to the middle. So that's not, you know, in order for me to go really to the middle, I need to put it onto the top. But again, as I'm changing the box like this, this just looks funny. I That's the reason that I don't like using triangles because it's hard to keep symmetry with, with triangles. It's very hard. Um, so just does make a lot of sense. So I just wanted to cover that real quick um, uh, before, I'm, before I'm wrapping up. So we talked about a few concepts here before I'm moving into some of the resources that you can use, uh, some of the inspiration that I have um, uh, or I had throughout the years as I'm, uh, you know, kind of uh, finding my style for those diagrams. So um, we talked about a few elements here. Remember, we talked about the connecting arrows, um, you know, to the center. Uh, don't, you know, don't cross the boxes with arrowheads that just look funny. Uh, space out, you know, make sure that things are symmetrical. That's the, the one key thing that I want you to take out of this. Things should be symmetrical. Things should be like really on to the point. We talked about a few concepts with the text here, kind of providing explanations in the text, like I show you here, like I showed you here. So again, and these are things that are easy to do. Like you just need to create some text and position that on top of the, on top of the line. And always remember like how how the diagram will look like eventually. Like always remember, here are all the elements that I have, so you don't have to re-engineer the diagram or reverse engineer the diagram as you are creating it. And then you will do that. I mean, that's okay, that's part of the process, but but in time you will be good at it. You will be better at it. So practice makes perfect, uh, make perfection. So cool. All right, I wanted to talk to you about some inspiration um, and resources. So the first thing, uh, let's, uh, let's talk about that. Uh, I'll bring this one. So I got to give a big shout out to my boy, Frank Deneman. So Frank, um, uh, he's, uh, you know, someone that um, I met a few years ago um, or many, many years ago when I was uh, when I was starting my my career with VMware and all that. And Frank is uh, the chief technologies, the technologist in uh, in VMware for uh, for, uh, I think, machine learning and, you know, cloud. Uh, basically cloud uh, um, infrastructure. He wrote multiple books um, and Frank is just a super awesome guy, um, but he has a very good superpower, which is um, he is, you know, one of those architects that really uh, using his OCD for his advantage. Uh, and throughout the years, he created numerous diagrams in his books and all that. Um, and I wanted to give you some example here. This is one of the articles that he wrote about subnova clustering. Actually, it's a great article. I read that. Um, and you can see the diagrams that he's creating. Like, look at the symmetry here. Like, look at, look at the level of details. Um, those diagrams, yes, they're not my style of diagrams in terms of you know, the glowing effect and all that and dark theme, but that's totally okay. I mean, he is creating those diagrams with, with a book in mind. And plus he just like the, you know, the, the light theme or the white theme, which is totally cool. Um, but look at those diagrams. Those are like super impressive in terms of the, uh, you know, the symmetry. And yes, you might think, yeah, a bunch of boxes and all that, but trust me, this is, this is hard to do. This is hard to, to come by. So you have a lot of diagrams in this article. I'll paste it in the chat um, after the stream. So Frank, a big shout out to my boy Frank. He's, uh, you know, he's an awesome dude, and he creates like brilliant diagrams. So um, that's that. Now let's talk about some icons um, and some shortcuts and where to find things. So first of all, in the Azure Arc Jumpstart, uh, you know, if you're not familiar, that's the project that uh, that I started three years ago, grown tremendously. Um, go check it out. But uh, again, we're not talking about Azure Arc today. But in the Azure Arc Jumpstart, you basically have two PowerPoints. Uh, you have diagrams PowerPoints and you also have Jumpstart Overview. Both of those decks will have a lot of the elements that I talked about today and in the previous stream. So basically what you can do is you can just download those diagrams and copy um, uh, the elements so you will not have to reinvent the wheel. It will be easier for you to manipulate, easier for you to learn. So definitely recommend go and download those two diagrams. Another big shout out is to David Summers. Uh, David actually reached out um, over, Twitter, over Twitter a few uh, weeks ago. Uh, you know, he noticed that I gave him a shout out in the in the previous in the previous stream. Awesome, 
awesome work by David Summers when it comes to the when it comes to the icons. So in this GitHub repository, basically David created tons of icons uh, for uh, for uh, you know for Azure. Um, and those icons, like he goes through the design and all of that. So if you want to nerd out on how we actually go by and do that, uh, go ahead and do that. All the links are in the um, in the uh, um, in the GitHub repository, and obviously I'm gonna uh, put that also in the description. He has all the di all the icons that you that you really need. Um, at least the last time that I checked, all the icons that you need in order for you to uh, to get going, um, especially when it comes to uh, when it comes to Azure. But again, finding icons is not that hard, to be honest. One, make sure that you're not breaching any copyright rights, uh, so that's important. Uh, but um, also. Look for the name of the icon that you want and just add PNG or transparent. Trust me, you will find a lot of things. Um, so again, big shout out to David. Um, awesome work, my friend. And Kubernetes community, if you're into Kubernetes um, related architecture diagrams, actually in the Kubernetes repository under community, um, you will find a lot of those icons. So you have the SVG files, you have the PNG files, everything that you need. So uh, again, just going to give you an example. I'll go here to SVG, infrastructure components, doesn't really matter. Uh, you know, but uh, you can see that you have those icons. By the way, if you're not familiar with that, um, so those check uh, um, uh, checkers um, icons that you have, like those, those black and white boxes that you have, that just show that uh, indicate that this is a transparent um, icon. So basically, if you will drag this, um, let me show you. So if you will drag this, I hope it will work uh, to the, you know, to your diagram. I'm just going to move this here and just going to drag it. Yeah, no, you need to PNG. But anyway, those are uh, those are uh, uh, transparent transparent icons. So uh, definitely check that out if you're into Kubernetes and if you're not familiar with that. Last resource that I wanted to share with you before I'm signing off um, and wanted to say thanks to everyone um, is uh, 100 PowerPoint shortcuts for PC and Mac. Very good website. Um, you have a lot of icons there, so definitely uh, definitely check that out. Um, uh, you know topics everything that you need. Now, in order to take it to the next level, uh, one thing that I uh, that I like to use as I'm creating diagrams, and if I'm in diagram mode and I'm like just kind of going all over the place, um, a lot of the time I like to take my stream deck, which is basically, uh, I don't know if you'll be able to see that, uh, it's kind of hard. So taking my stream deck and just, uh, uh, it's just macro keys basically and assign hotkeys and as i'm creating diagrams for example the control g the control d the control shift g uh you know all those uh all those keyboard shortcuts i like to put those in my stream deck so basically give me another keyboard um and it uh it speed up my process um so that's something they like to use so i'm assigning that um one last thing before i'm signing out uh, uh someone asked me like what kind of monitor you use for those diagrams and all that so i use a 38 inch monitor to do those diagrams right now i'm presenting to you in uh in 1920 over 1080 uh just because you know people watching this over their phone mobile devices and whatnot but i use a 38 inch monitor to do those diagrams much easier i have a lot of real estate and all that so there is that all right Cool. With that, I think I'm wrapping up the stream. I hope that you learned some new stuff today. Definitely go check out the previous one as well. Just gonna complete the picture all around. Uh, we covered a lot of things today. I wanna say thank you. Enjoy the rest of the day. Happy holidays if you're celebrating those. Um, and I guess I'm gonna see you in the in the next one. Uh, yeah. Thanks everyone for, uh, for joining. Um, peace.